What's up guys, I'm BraveX Hero, and today we're going to be ranking all 52 Destiny PvP maps. That's right, from every map released with the original Destiny game to every PvP map released during every expansion, all the way up into the current release of the Destiny 2 Witch Queen. Yes, this was a massive undertaking, and to help you all out, this list will be in alphabetical order, so if you have a favorite map and you'd like to see where it ranks, you can find it down below in the description. So if you've never played Destiny 1, brace yourselves, because you're going to see some of the most interesting Crucible maps ever created in a Destiny franchise, and how well those maps fare up against our current Destiny 2 PvP maps. But with that out of the way, let's get into the video. Altar of Flame is our first map, and this has to be one of the bigger maps still in the current game. Overall, it has balanced spawn locations, but can get a bit one-sided, but that rarely happens. With it being a bigger map, the chaos of normal PvP can easily spread throughout the entire map. I would say that the most chaotic location would be B-Flag when teams are trying to capture the zone. Easily guys, this map ranks in the B-Tier category. Our next map required you to use a shotgun. Literally, a primary isn't needed when Guardians load into the Anomaly. We have a map that any glorified shotgun ape would love to play day in and day out. This map was designed around CQC gunfights, which ultimately lands this map in the C tier category. This map really doesn't bring much to the table when it comes to weapon diversity. Again, most players just run around with fusion rifles or shotguns. Asylum is our next map. This is one you hear so much about from our Destiny veterans, aka the Destiny Grandpas. Now, this map had it all. From lots of cover, different angles for tactical gameplay, it even became one of the most beloved maps for Trials of Osiris. I think out of all the maps on today's list, Asylum really set the bar high, landing it in the S tier category. I'm sure you can ask any Destiny player and they'll gladly give up 6 PvP maps just to get this one back into Destiny 2. Bannerfall was our first map that was brought forward from Destiny 1 into Destiny 2. Personally, this was a great map in Destiny 1, but I can't really say the same for Destiny 2. With how fast paced the Crucible has become, it really makes this map feel very unbalanced and the map lacks a lot of cover. Majority of cover comes from the Mohawk area and this map can be notorious for spawn trapping as well. Bannerfall easily falls into the C tier category. Bastion is our first large PvP map. That's right, you heard that right guys, large. This is a large PvP map. And if you've played Destiny 2 at all, this game really lacks big crucible maps. Well, Bastion allowed players to utilize their sparrows. That's right, you could use a sparrow on this map. But not only that, you could use any other drivable vehicle, such as the Cabal Intercept or the Fallen Pikes. Let's not forget that this map came with built-in turrets scattered throughout the entire location. This was a good change of pace and you could successfully use Scout Rifles and Pulse Rifles. Overall, Bastion easily ranks in the A tier category and yes guys, if ported over to Destiny 2, players would rejoice. Black Shield can be easily remembered by players as the map with all the doors on it. This map had a lot of real estate, but majority of the fights either took place at the entrance to the base or right outside B flag. I would guess that the biggest drawback to this map would be players dying to the doors either closing on them or not opening fast enough. This could be the main reason why the community reached out to Bungie and asked him to please remove all the doors on this map. Funny thing is, they never did it. Black Shield finds itself in the B tier category. Flying Watch was one of the original maps that launched with Destiny, and it was the first time players learned what spawn trapping was. This map literally had some of the worst spawn locations ever created, and that's not even including how awkward the fights were due to the map having too many narrow corridors inside it. I think if spawn locations were different, I could see this map easily being ranked much higher. But as for now, it lands in the C tier category. The next map on the list is the Burnout, 
or for some of my OG players out there, Burning Shrine. Now, the Burnout is probably one of the few balanced maps we currently have in the game. And guys, it's not boring. This map has a lot going for it. Great spawn locations. Engagements seem fair. This map also doesn't cater to one playstyle. Players can get away with any weapon archetype. Overall, the Burnout sits up there in the S tier category and for good reason. Our next map on the list is my subscribe button. Did you know that 84% of you who watch my content are not subscribed? Guys, if you've been enjoying the video so far and you'd like to see more Destiny 2 content from me, then do me a huge favor and click that subscribe button and don't forget to turn on all notifications. I really do appreciate it. But let's get back into the tier list. Cathedral of Dusk is our first PvP map where the destination is set on the Dreadnought and this map was great, but had one major drawback. Each time you died and spawned back in, it would take about a minute just to get back into the fight. Overall, this map played fairly well in 6s, in 3v3, and even game modes like Rift. Cathedral of Dusk easily sits in the B tier category. Coming up, we have a map named after a large pot. We have the Cauldron. This map literally felt like a boiling point. With players melting their way to the center to capture B flag, engagements could feel really chaotic. Yes, this was another Destiny 1 map brought into Destiny 2. Similar to Bannerfall, I feel like our movement is so fast in Destiny 2, uh, it knocks Cauldron down a little bit, making it rank in the B tier category. Up next, we have the only map to be located on the Dreaming City. We have the Citadel. This map is currently locked inside the Destiny Content Vault, the DCV. Now, the Citadel can easily go down as an agricultural masterpiece. As for how it played in PvP, eh, not so much. This map had its drawbacks. From spawn trapping to spawn locations, the Citadel enters the B tier category. If there was ever a map to give me nightmares, this next map would be it. We have Convergence, or for my Destiny 1 veterans, Pantheon. This map is symmetrical and you'd think it would be great for all game modes, but it really had narrow lanes and the ability to spawn flip every two minutes was annoying. This map easily crashes into the trash tier category and I, just like majority of players, wish it never came into Destiny 2. Crossroads is one of the bigger maps in the entire Destiny franchise, which led to a lot of distance engagements. But don't be fooled, if you found yourself in a close range engagement, this map provided a lot of cover and concealment with its geometry. This one was one of my personal favorites and for the community as well, and can be easily ranked in the S tier category. Our next map is known for having some of the craziest spawn trapping in Destiny PvP. We have the Dead Cliffs. Despite that shortcoming, this map is still one of the favorite maps for tournament play and Trials of Osiris. Some players can get really frustrated when playing 6v6 game modes on Dead Cliffs, but when it came to 3v3 game modes, this map felt fairly balanced. Overall, Dead Cliffs finds its home in the B tier category. Coming up next, we have Distant Shores, which is one of the very few large maps still in the game at the moment. Now, this map has a lot going for it in 6v6 game modes. It boasts great sight lines as well as plenty of cut throughs for short range CQC players. One of the biggest drawbacks to Distant Shores is that this map can be very boring. Sometimes players tend to camp on the outer skirts of the map, thus making the gameplay much slower. Overall, this map ranks in the B tier category. Our next map is the Drifter. No, not that Drifter. The map was called the Drifter and it was released alongside the Taken King expansion. Now this map was fairly balanced and symmetrical and most players remember playing Trials of Osiris on it. Now. A drawback to this map was it could feel very claustrophobic and small, thus landing it in the B tier category. Coming up next, we have the Dungeons. This map was set on the Dreadnought and was great for the game mode Rift. But as for other modes such as Control and Clash, not so much. Spawning in so far away from gunfights, 
players often found themselves running to their next engagement more often than actually being in that engagement. The dungeon sits in the C tier category. Next on the list, we have a map that resembles the Leviathan Raid. That map is Emperor's Respite. Currently, this map is in the Destiny Content Vault, and for good reason. This map didn't perform well with any game mode. For Rumble matches, it felt too large. For Control, it felt overwhelming when it came to map control, and for Competitive, it catered extremely well to the team that had the inside advantage. This map can easily find its spot in the trash tier category. Endless Veil vale might be the only small map in the entire Destiny game that actually plays well. If I had to compare it to any other map, this is the map Anomaly wish it was. Now Endless Veil vale was symmetrical and it played well for Trials of Osiris and competitive game modes. It can be a bit chaotic in 6v6 modes, but that easily gets handled by the great spawn points on this map. This map easily finds its spot in the S tier category. Our next map is one that can be easily confused for the Trials of the Nine map, Eternity. That map is Equinox. Now this is one of the few larger maps that shipped alongside Destiny 2. But with its poor design and the ability for teams to spawn trap their enemies, Bungie had no choice but to throw this in the Destiny Content Vault. Equinox finds its home in the B tier category. Our next map is Eternity. Now, this map was designed for one thing alone, and that was to cater to the game mode Countdown. At the launch of Destiny 2, players were introduced to a new game mode called Countdown. Now, not all maps were great for this game mode, so Bungie specifically designed Eternity for that reason alone. The map Eternity really doesn't play well in other game modes like Rumble and Control. Eternity finds a spot in the C tier category. This next map was originally released in the original Destiny game, but was revamped for Destiny 2. We have Exodus Blue. This one can be easily summed up in one word. Chaotic. With landscape and geometry scattered throughout the entire map, players can fight from any vantage point. As chaotic as Exodus Blue can be, this one can be ranked in the B tier category. If you've ever wanted to fight inside a Cabal base, then our next map would have piqued your interest. We have Firebase Delphi. This Cabal base style map was a personal favorite of the community for the game mode Trials of Osiris. It was even a great choice for game modes like Rumble. This one easily sits in B and it would be interesting to see a variation of this map return to Destiny 2. On that note, what if I told you we did get a Cabal based style map in Destiny 2, but it was nothing like Firebase Delphi. We ended up getting the map Firebase Echo. This map is currently in the Destiny Content Vault, and for good reason. With its aggressive funnel points and design, it'd be shocking to see games fully end with 12 players in the match. That's how often people would go to orbit. This one sits in the trash tier category. I think any map where Guardians can summon their Sparrow is worthy of getting a revamp for Destiny 2. We have the moon map, First Light. This map was initially released in Destiny 1, and it was great for game modes like Combined Arms. With its built-in turrets on the map and moon-like space bases, players really enjoyed something different than their usual PvP maps. This one easily sits in the S tier, and I'd fight anyone who says otherwise. The Vex are such interesting enemies, and their PvP maps are just as interesting. Don't believe me? Well, our next map is a glorified Vex battleground. We have Floating Guardians. Now, this one played extremely well in all game modes, such as Rift, Clash, Control, and even Trials of Osiris. With its weird circular design, battles took place in all locations, but nothing felt too powerful. This is another one that should come back to Destiny in some shape or form. This map easily landed a spot in the A tier category. Fortress is probably one of the very few large maps we still have in the game today. This map is great for 6v6 game modes, but more recently it was added to the competitive playlist and this is where you can really see the drawbacks to Fortress. In 3v3 game modes, this map could feel really unbalanced. This one ranks in the B tier category, with its only saving grace being it being a large map. Speaking of Vex structures and designs, our next map 
wasn't received well with the community. We have the map Fragment. This map can really feel one-sided, and if players learn how to spawn trap their enemies, this could lead to some really long, boring games. Fragment finds a spot in the B tier category. I feel like Bungie has a bias towards Earth maps, since majority of them are great for PvP. Our next map is located on Earth, and that map is Frontier. This map had a bit of everything, from battles inside the warehouse, to battles on the bridge, to skirmishes on the outer skirts of the map. Overall, this was a great map for majority of game modes in Destiny 1, and personally, I think it would be interesting to see it in Destiny 2. This map sits in A tier. I have a suspicion that majority of the maps that are inside the Destiny Content Vault are maps that players really didn't enjoy playing. Our next map is proof of that. Next up, we have Gambler's Ruin. This map was moved to the Destiny Content Vault several seasons ago, and players have never been happier. This one was poorly designed and really leaned into a lot of players inner shotgun ape. This one easily finds its home in the trash tier category. Up next, we have the map Icarus. This is a war mine style base located on Mercury. The map design is somewhat symmetrical and battles can take place either outside the base or inside the Rasputin war mine bunker. For sixes, this map was tolerable, but for Rumble, it was a nightmare. With the size of the map, players would go entire games only facing off between a few players in the entire lobby. This map is okay and it finds its home in the B tier category. Javelin 4 is our next map and this one instantly became a community favorite. Jav 4 has been in the game since the launch of Destiny 2 and this map plays fairly well in any game mode. This one was an easy one to rank, it sits in S tier. Our next map is extremely difficult to rank. Some players hated it and some players loved it. That map is Legion's Gulch. If you've ever wanted to be shot out of a Cabal Cannon, this is the map to do it. Legion's Gulch had a mix of battles. You can get up close and personal, or you can find a nice little spot on the bridge and utilize a scout rifle. This map allowed players to do that. Legion's Gulch is currently sitting in the Destiny Content Vault, and I'm pretty sure Bungie isn't bringing it back. For today's rankings, it sits in A tier. If there was ever a map that was vaulted, and I could delete my entire vault to get it back, our next map would be it. We have the map Meltdown. This is yet another Warmind style bunker, but this one's located on Mars. This map could feel chaotic at times, but with its design, players had a choice of either engagements inside the bunker, or you could test your skills in the long sight lines. This map was great for any game mode and easily sits in the A tier category. Our next map could be mistaken as an alleyway somewhere throughout the EDZ, and that map is Memento. Engagements on this map can be summed up in two areas. Either you fight long lanes right off a of spawn, or you can choose to fight with inside the buildings. This one was very one dimensional and not at the top of the list for many players. But even with its few drawbacks, this one barely makes it out of the trash tier and into the C tier category. Midtown is another map that was specifically created for the game mode Countdown. But with the removal of the game Countdown, Bungie allowed this map to stay in rotation for game modes like Clash and Control. More recently, this map was added to the competitive playlist and even Trials of Osiris. One of the few saving graces for this map is that it pulled players out of their element. It allowed players to utilize weapons such as scout rifles. Now this map was an easy one to rank and it ranks in the B tier category. I find it somewhat strange that we could lose planets and destinations within our solar system but still have a PvP map on a planet that no longer exists. Well our next map is located on Titan and that map is Pacifica. Now this one catered more to a hand cannon shotgun playstyle and overall this map was great for 3v3 game modes but it could feel extremely chaotic and claustrophobic in 6v6 game modes. This one ranks in the B tier category. Coming up on our list, we have Radiant Cliffs, aka the map with all the hiding spots. Now, this map isn't bad, but it isn't good either. It's like lukewarm water, it's just there. For sixes, it plays okay. For 3v3, it's too big of a map. In modes such as Survival and Trials of Osiris, it could really feel like a standoff match when going up against an enemy. You both are just trying to look for the easy pick. If this map didn't play well for sixes, it could find itself in the D tier category. But since it does play okay for sixes, today it ranks in C tier. Imagine if Bungie made a PvP map in the shape of a donut. Well, they did. 
Our next map is tucked away in the Destiny content vault, and that map is Retribution. This Cabal space station style map is circular, and players mainly remember it for all the times they have to run around in a circle looking for the enemies to kill. Retribution is a tough one to rank. With toned down abilities, this map isn't bad, but in the current meta we have now, I can see players utilizing their abilities over their weapons. For today, Retribution ranks in the B tier category. Rusted Lands was such an iconic map in Destiny 1, and I'm pretty sure it's the reason why Bungie brought it into Destiny 2. This map featured large and wide sight lines along with an industrial feel to it. Players could get away with only utilizing their snipers, but this map mainly featured a lot of primary gunfights such as pulse rifles and hand cannons. Today, Rusted Lands ranks in A tier. Our next map is bad. Like it's so bad, I'm gonna cover it in 15 seconds. We have Sector 618, which is a Destiny 1 PlayStation exclusive. If PlayStation players had a choice, they would have given it to Xbox players and called it a day. This one is in the trash tier category. One of my favorite additions to Destiny came with the Rise of Iron expansion, and that was the map Skyline. This abandoned Clovis Brave facility brought several exciting elements to PvP. With its awkward layout, players had the ability to be creative on how to engage their enemies. This one sits in A tier category for its overall uniqueness and how it catered to all game modes. Our next map is one of the largest maps ever created in the Destiny franchise. We have the map Sky Shock. Now this map came with everything, from allowing players to summon their sparrows or to utilize turrets to defend zones. This map is what I wish we had in Destiny 2. This one ranks in A tier. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to play PvP in an icy war mine cave? Well, our next map is Solitude, which is 100% what it felt like when spawning in so far away from the battlefields. This map was known for having one of the most contested B flags in Destiny history. This map had everything from long range engagements to crazy hectic CQC battles. Solitude sits in S tier and I hope one day it returns from the Destiny content vault. The last exit was an interesting map. The idea and design are there, but overall this map lacked a lot when it came to spawn points and zone positioning. Personally, I'm glad this map never made it to Destiny 2. This one found its home in the trash tier category. Thieves Den was yet another close quarter PvP map. This one really catered to shotgun players. This map had a bunch of different corridors and avenues players could fight from. But regardless of the game mode, you can easily predict that your enemy is going to shock and ape you with a shoddy. This map falls in the trash tier category. Timekeeper was another console exclusive map, and this PvP map was exclusive to PlayStation players only. This map was by far one of the better PlayStation exclusives. Don't get me wrong, the bar wasn't set high when your competition is the map Sector 618. Regardless of it being a better exclusive, this map still ranks in C tier. Twilight Gap is our next map, and if there was ever a map in Destiny 2 that screamed Shotgun Ape, this map was it. In Destiny 1, this map was fair and players could look past its flaws, but in Destiny 2, where players are so fast, this really amplifies how bad this map is. This map is ranked in C tier since the only time it feels balanced is in 3v3 game modes. One of the most unique maps in Destiny has to be the map Vertigo. This map was designed as an old Vex structure and was fairly balanced in majority of game modes. It could feel chaotic when trying to capture B flag and control, but overall this map was great and could be ranked in the B tier category. Our next map used to be in the Destiny content vault, and I know I speak for most players when I say it should have stayed in the Destiny content vault. Up next, we have the map Vostok. This map has a lot of potential, but with some players staying in the towers, this could really lead to some boring games. This map is ranked in the trash tier category. Widow's Court has to be one of my favorite maps in all of Destiny. It even rivals Rusted Lands, but even so, I feel like majority of the community is split on hating this map and loving it. Even with my bias towards it, Widow's Court only ranks in the B tier category. Lastly, we have Wormhaven, which is a mix of every type of engagement, from CQC fights inside to long range scout rifle pulse rifle battles on the outer positions of the map. 
This one is fairly balanced given at times that it can easily feel like players can get spawn trapped. This one ranks in the B tier category. And there you have it, all 52 PvP maps ranked. Let me know down in the comment section, did I miss a few? Did I rank some improperly or where would you rank any of these maps? Hopefully you enjoyed the video and if you guys want to see more videos like this, then do me a huge favor and hit that like button and don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well. Other than that, I really do appreciate you stopping by and hanging out. You guys have a good one and I will see you in the next video.